All right, I just used the triangle tool for the first time. So the only shape tools I've used so far are the ellipse, the rectangle just for the band on the hat, and the triangle tool. But that doesn't make the best shirt collar yet. So how can I modify it? I can use free transform. And I just like to do that by using Command T in Photoshop, right clicking, then using warp. And I'm going to curve it out this way a little bit, curve it this way a little bit. Maybe curve it out this way a little bit. So I want it to look kind of like a wide, a wide collared Hawaiian shirt. And then I can hit return and then I can always transform it again. So edit free transform. And then I can hold down shift and I can distort it a little bit. So I think I want that. And then maybe I want to rotate it slightly just so it goes right at the corner. There we go. So that's a really weird complex shape. You can see all those points where the vector actually changes. Those are the anchor points for the curves. I'm not sure what color I want yet. So why don't I just pick one? How about what's a good Hawaiian shirt color for a cowboy? Yeah, like a baby blue, a cyan. I can decide how saturated I want based on how much gray is in it. You don't want your emojis to have super, super saturated color because then it can kind of be exhausting to the eye. These are just a visual language. So I'll do kind of a grayish cyan. Yeah, that's good. With the pink and the yellow, got good primaries going. Now I'm going to duplicate it, Command-J. I'm going to hit Command-T for transforming, right-click, flip it horizontally, hold down Shift, move it to the other side. And now, I'm going to use that triangle tool again. Rotate it. Ah. Change to the move tool. I got to create the inside of the shirt. Command T, stretch it. Just like the cowboy hat, making a compound path here. I'm not actually merging them together, but I'll put them into a group at the end. And you can always use your arrow keys too to kind of nudge things into place. Now I want this to be a lighter color. Then I want to move it underneath the other triangle, right? And then I want to transform it. And distort is actually a good tool for this, where I can just move one corner at a time. Because I want it unbuttoned. And then if I want to add a curve to it, I can warp it. So maybe something like that. Okay, then I'm going to duplicate that. Command-T, flip it horizontally, see if this gives me something I can use, or if I need to create another version of it. It's not bad. I can use my arrow keys again to nudge it into place. It's actually called nudge, or, or at least used to be called nudge in your history. When we do Illustrator and, and custom vectors later, like our logo design, we're really going to sweat little things like the points where things come together. But for now, it's not super important because it can be a real pain. All right, now if I want that white underneath, maybe I don't want that white underneath. Maybe I want yellow. Maybe I want some chest hair on my, on my Hawaiian cowboy. So what can I do? Just fill it in. Check the yellow and then move it down 
underneath the shirt collars. And remember, you can just use the move tool. You can find your different layers. You can turn on auto select layer. That can help to readjust anything. Use command T and just play with things a little, rotate things, make them fit. You don't want the emoji to take up too much space. So the reason the circle is kind of the default is because it's a nice, you know, central image, doesn't take up a whole lot of visual space. So it's easy to place into a text. I can warp it a little bit. I can warp each of these a little differently. Give it that casual look I want. And then I need to make a button, I think, for the Hawaiian shirt. Actually, maybe let this one sink out like that so I can put a button on it. Good enough. Okay, so what am I going to use for a button? I'm going to be lazy, just duplicate this eyeball, bring it down, shrink it down. Command T. Shirt button. Maybe warp it a little. Maybe tilt it a little. Good. Okay, now how do I make it a Hawaiian shirt rather than just a blue shirt? We're going to learn another shape tool that's really, really helpful. Can be. And it is what's called the custom shape tool. So it's at the bottom of, of your vector shape tools. Custom shape tool. What's sad is the custom shape tool used to be this shape. Well, used to be the shape that the tool looks like this kind of curvy star shape, which was really, really helpful for lots and lots of things. Now the custom shape tool is all the things in their library. You'll see it in the tool options. And they're not as good as they used to be, though of course you could load your own vectors into it. So they have different folders, wild animals, leaf trees, boats, flowers. So the obvious thing for a Hawaiian shirt would be a palm tree. And sure enough, they have one. Though it's a pretty complicated vector. I can use it. It's a vector shape. Yeah, that would be a lot just to make on my own, right? And yeah, where will I put it? Well, maybe I'll shrink it and put it on the collar. And warp it and distort it so it fits. But you can see all the anchor points that it takes to make a graphic like that. So it's like a logo of a palm tree. And we're going to be learning how to do that for ourselves. If I place it. Yeah, maybe like that. Onto one shirt collar. And notice, because it's a new shape, it will turn on new properties again. Oh, where is it? Click on it. There it is. So it has different aspects to it, like density and feather, because this is based on a shape path rather than just a shape tool. But it's all of these different like saved vectors are in there. So if you don't see properties here, you'll see it in the top. And so I want to turn off that stroke and just have it be a color, and maybe I'll pick one of these colors. Oh, not for the stroke, though. I want to turn the stroke off and try a fill. Yeah, like the lighter blue, that kind of works. Let's see how that looks. All right now, maybe I want a little bit of a, a sun. Or let's look at some of the other custom shapes I could use. 
I really miss that original one. I'm sure there's a way I could get it again, but just with defaults. And let's go to flowers. And again, I think these vectors are way more complicated than they should be for this kind of basic use. But I'll choose the simplest one. I'll put it on the other. Bless you. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. I can rotate it. I can warp it. There you go. He's dressed up. He's ready for the Brady Family two-part special. Now, look how many points this took, right? And that's because I, tr I uh, transformed it and warped it. And so vectors can take a lot of memory sometimes when they have a lot of points. It also has that stroke on it, which I need to turn off. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. So I have to select that and then turn off the stroke. Now, if you don't manage to do all that, it's not a big deal. We're just getting introduced to it. All of this will become easier with practice. Then I click on my guiding layer. Just so I don't see any of those vector lines. If I can turn off my background, this is my free-floating emoji. All right. So, save my work. Command S. It will save it in the same place on the desktop. There it is. If we follow the directions, we're going to upload this as a free-floating PNG. So I've already saved my PSD version. Now I need to save my online version. So this is my working format in Photoshop. I'm going to turn off my background. So I see that grid and it's just free floating. I'm turning off all my guiding layers. This is a common uh, mistake you'll make at the beginning of class, right? And you want to meet all the requirements. So turn off all guiding layers. So the only thing that's shown are these shape, vector shapes you've used, whether they're grouped or not right and then with that grid background showing i'm going to say file save a copy out of photoshop in photopea it would be export and then i'm going to make it not a jpeg because that would fill in the background rectangle with white i want this to be a free floating emoji so i'm going to save it as a png to the desktop say okay All right, now I can see my PNG. I'm going to mark that orange. If I, if I double click and open it just in preview, it's going to be on a dark gray background. And that reminds me, that's how my emoji looks. Smaller, right? And on a, with transparency. Now, even though we created it with vectors, when we make a PNG, that's a raster format. So that's why our resolution mattered. Now, let me upload it. So I create a post, put my name, I want to be called, last name is registered, and then I use the little image upload. It's only our fourth class meeting, so we just get a little better at this each time. And then I shrink it down, that PNG, to fit nicely under the name for a quick presentation critique. So these are, this is what I call my basic flat, you know, emojis. The next thing we can do is add things like textures, but that would be an extra. You don't need these bonus finishing extras to get full credit for this exercise. But my next video will take the flat shapes like I have here and then give them, it's pretty easy to do using layer effects, some different textures, some different gradients. That can be fun. But make sure you save your work and then post the basic, basic flat shapes first. All right. It's kind of like if Cartman went on vacation. <laughs>